Good morning, my friends. My name is John Phipps, and I want to thank you for joining me for Facebook Live this morning. Uh, I am at home today, although I'm going to be going to the office in a little bit. <clears throat> I just wanted to get on here real quick and share a devotion with you. Good morning, Nancy. Good to see you. I'm usually sitting at my kitchen table, um, but my kitchen table is kind of broken right now. It's a little bit wobbly, and uh, so this is actually... Uh, a better place for me to do this with you today. Good morning, Carrie and Michael. I see you guys there. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're ready for the weekend. I love Fridays. Fridays mean for me that um, it's not technically a day off, but it's a day to kind of get Monty off to school and take it easy, kind of, kind of rest a little bit. Obviously, I'm not at the office right now. Good morning, Pam and Shirley. Good morning, Dale. I have a one o'clock session today and I have a two o'clock meeting today. And um, then after that, I'm pretty much free, although I've got some reading to do for school. Good morning, Marinella. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do tonight um, is get together with Sweet Dina and she and I are gonna be connecting with another couple. And um, they are from Lakeland and we're going to the St. Pier, St. Petersburg Pier. Uh, tonight. So that's going to be fun. I think it's going to be perfect weather for hanging out at the pier and having dinner and getting to know this other couple and just uh, just chilling. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. And then tomorrow night um, is going to be wonderful as well because Dina and I have another date night tomorrow night. Now, if you're wondering why I'm having two date nights with Dina in the same week, it's because I've got to make up for last weekend. So I got to practice what I preach. Amen. <clears throat> I'm glad that you're with uh, Pat Marinella. That's great. Good morning, Jan. Thanks for watching, everybody. So last weekend, um, you know that I was just completely overwhelmed because I had spent the week in Lakeland uh, for school, and then I came home, had to do my sermon on Saturday, had to preach it on Sunday. Dina and I didn't have a date night. The pier is really cool. And if you haven't been to the pier yet in, at St. Petersburg, uh, you're going to really enjoy it. I don't have a plan for the date night tomorrow night, uh, although I do plan on not spending much money. Um, so if you have any suggestions or ideas, uh, because I'm spending money tonight on dinner at the pier, tomorrow night has to be a cheap date, if you don't mind me saying that. Uh, who knows, maybe um, walking around the mall, having a cup of coffee at Starbucks. You know, that's like, what, 10, 12 bucks and just you know hanging out chatting talking kicking it you know some of the best dates that i have with sweet dina are the cheapest ones can i get an amen isn't that kind of what we all want is just to sit and talk anyway it doesn't have to be uh an expensive outing or anything like that it doesn't have to be a play or a movie it doesn't have to be an expensive dinner sometimes the best dates yeah picnic that's a great idea for tomorrow night can be just hanging out and <clears throat> talking and um, doing something unusual, maybe going someplace that we don't typically go and that's okay and that feels good. And uh, yeah, just being present, that's right, Marty, just being present. So good morning, Carrie, good morning, the other Pam. We usually get three Pams on here with us in the morning. Good morning to all of you. So today I do have a devotion for us. I'm not just gonna be talking about my date nights. Uh, but I do throw that out there <clears throat> as we're waiting for more people to jump on. I always talk about myself a little bit or what I'm up to, what I'm doing. And uh, sunset at the beach. Now that would be great for Saturday night as well. Or a picnic at the beach. Hmm. Okay. I may take your advice on that. Uh, whoever said picnic, I forgot it. I think it might have been Marty and then sunset at the beach. I'm going to probably do that tomorrow night. That sounds great. Anyway, uh, let's get cracking, shall we? Um, I just want to thank you for joining me and um, for making this a priority in your life because you know what? We got to get into the Word. We got to get it into us. And when we get into the Word, it gets into us. Amen? So today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I've been focusing on the Old Testament for the last couple days. The last couple days we've been talking about Samson. Samson was great, and I really enjoyed teaching on him for a couple days. Um, I learned some things I didn't know about Samson. I'm, I mean, I read the book, um, you know, Judges, and I've, I, I've seen the movie on his, on his life and everything else, but 
I really liked his um, coming together at the end and finishing strong. Because I know there's been times in my life that I have not lived according to the way I wanted to live and I've made mistakes and done things I wish I hadn't, but the truth of the matter is, I wanna finish super, super strong like Samson, and he did. He finished strong and he did what the Lord wanted him to do at the end. And so that led me to think about what I wanna teach on today. And I thought, well, I've been speaking on the Old Testament for a while, let's get back into the New Testament. So today we're gonna to be studying a word. This is a word study today on discipline. Today we're gonna to study discipline as a Christian. And the difference between discipline as a Christian and uh, in particularly the difference between that and discipline as a non-Christian. So I'm gonna be looking at this from a kind of a different perspective today, and I hope that you enjoy it. Now, let's talk about the word discipline. Good morning, Hillary, I see you there, Lynn and Terry. Discipline is to punish or penalize for the sake of enforcing obedience and perfecting moral character. That's what discipline is, let me read it again. Good morning, guys. To punish or penalize for the sake of enforcing obedience and perfecting moral character. So primarily what we're gonna be doing is looking at uh, the word discipline from the, um, from the perspective of perfecting moral character. Now, those of us that are disciplined, and most of us are to some degree, uh, some people aren't as disciplined as they'd like to be, but we can always make changes. There's been times in my life I have not been disciplined. Uh, I'm disciplined right now that every morning, Monday through Friday, I am going to share God's word with you for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, and, you know, whatever I want to choose to talk about or take your suggestions. I haven't had suggestions in a long time, um, so send them in. Um, I, I get a chance to just kind of be disciplined in, in, in God's word. Now, I'm going to study it either way, but why not study it with you? Why not take a few notes right here? And then let me look at them and reflect on God's word and share them with you so we can explore this together. Okay, let me also read to you what else I found. Spiritual disciplines are habits, practices, and experiences that are designed to develop, grow, and strengthen certain qualities of spirit, to build muscles of one's character, and expand spiritual understanding. Now, I know that when we think about muscles, we usually think about the body, right? The biceps, the triceps, the abs, whatever. Um, so much is being made of six packs these days and all that stuff. And, you know, um, it takes great discipline to build the body, to, to, to have muscles and form and all of that. But the truth of the matter is, um, what are you doing with those muscles? You're having to work them. You're having to do curls or bench presses or whatever the case might be to um, get that muscle um, or shoulder or whatever it is, those muscles to get bigger and to be strengthened. And as you're doing that, you're having to add more weight all the time. If you continue to use the same amount of weight every time you work out, you're not gonna get bigger muscles and bigger shoulders and a bigger form. What you have to do is continually add more weight onto that, maybe once a month or every two months or whatever, and push yourself to do more and more than you did before. I see Sue Bush is on here. I got a bow flex in our weight room upstairs from my friend Alan, and I'm so excited about that because I do go up there once in a while and mess around. And so I know a little bit about muscles, and I know that they are very, um, very, very fickle. They want to be pushed in order to grow. They need to be pushed in order to get bigger. So let's remember what this definition is to build muscles of one's character and expand spiritual understanding. That is discipline. We discipline our bodies physically if we want to lose weight or to create muscle tone. But what do we do for our soul and our spirit, my friends, if we wanna draw closer to the Lord and become more spiritually minded? We have to be disciplined um, not only in our mind and in our body and in our heart, but means we have to force ourselves to lean into the pain, lean into that which is sometimes difficult for us to do. Nobody lose weight by accident. You have to be very intentional to lose weight. You have to be intentional to um, 
build muscle. You have to be very intentional if you want to be the spiritual person that God created you to be. That means that you have to get on at 11 a.m. daily and listen to the devotions. It means that you should open your Bible while you're at home and flip over to these pages with me. It means that when there's nobody else around and nobody knows what you're doing, but God sees what you're doing. You have a moral compass, a moral character to be disciplined in mind, your thought, and in your heart to not sin against God. That is discipline, my friends. The Greek word is padeia. It means correction and chastisement. Now we're studying discipline, padeia, correction and chastisement. Let's take a look at Ephesians 6, 4. Would you flip over there with me? We've got just a few passages of scripture today. I've gone too far. Let me back up here. I've got Dina's Bible, and I'm not very fast at flipping through her Bible, but Ephesians 6, 4 talks a little bit about discipline. And I think it's interesting. Um, now, the word choice is a little bit different, but that's okay. Don't let that frustrate you. Um, we're using a different translation than um, the Bible dictionary that I looked up uh, this morning. But Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That is discipline, my friends. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Do not shame your children, but bring them up in the fear of and the training and the discipline of instruction in the Lord. That means that we are supposed to teach them, chastise them, correct them with kindness and gentleness, not with guilt and shame. Have you ever been part of a church in which, you know, the pastor just continues to just pour out guilt and shame about what you're not doing in your life? Now, maybe that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, but it doesn't always need to be the pastor. Sometimes the Holy Spirit reminds us that we need to be more disciplined. I know he does that in my life, and that's called conviction, my friends, okay? But a pastor should be encouraging you and edifying you. That means building you up to be the person that God wants you to be. That's what that means. But we have to respond to that to that edification. We have to respond to that encouragement by saying, you know what? I am going to be disciplined. I am going to have bigger arms or shoulders or biceps physically, but do I care about my, my mind and my heart as much as I do my body? Listen, I know that you guys have goals for weight loss. I know that you have goals for physical training and exercise, but do you have goals spiritually? If so, what are your goals? Because it's so easy to say, I want to lose 10 pounds. But not often do you hear people say, you know what? I want to be in my Bible six days a week instead of three. Now, these are measurable goals. And I always get back to the idea that, guys, here's what we need to do. We need to get back into creating measurable goals for our life. Okay? And we do this by looking at it from three different perspectives. Frequency, duration, and intensity. Okay, if you're keeping notes, I've preached this before. You might have already heard it. But we want to set measurable goals. When you say you want to quit smoking, quit smoking. Okay, when you say you want to quit drinking, quit drinking. But listen to me. When you say you want to lose weight, my question is, how much? I mean, you don't want to be a skeleton. If you say you want to lose weight, how much weight do you want to lose? Well, pastor, I'd like to lose 10 pounds. Okay, then how are we going to make that happen? What do we need to do to change something that's going to make that happen, my friends? And how much weight are you going to lose this week? And how much weight are you going to lose this month? You see, we're quick to talk about that. But when it comes to our spiritual well-being, sometimes we are a little bit flabby. I know that. I'm not sharing something with you that I haven't experienced. Just because I'm on here with you every morning at 11 a.m. doesn't mean that there hasn't been times in my life that I haven't been spiritually flabby. 
Let me tell you something, my friends. I need you to know as, as important as it is for you to lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever your goal might be, it's also important for you to say, you know what, I'm in my Bible three days a week, but I'm gonna be in my Bible six days a week. And my goal is to be in my Bible seven days a week. We need to set goals and be disciplined in our habits, my friends, not only with our body and our physical well-being, but also, more importantly, our heart, our spiritual well-being. That is called discipline. And when I talk about frequency, duration, and intensity regarding goals, what I am saying is frequency, instead of being in my Bible three days a week, I'm going to be in my Bible five days a week, or six days a week, or seven days a week. That's frequency. Duration? Okay, instead of being in my Bible for five minutes three times a week, I'm going to be in my Bible six days a week for 20 minutes. Frequency, duration, and intensity. Intensity has a lot to do with prayers. Remember, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Now, I know you can pray for an hour, right? Didn't Jesus condemn the Pharisees for their long prayers? So I don't think your prayers have to be long, but I, have to, I, th I think they need to be intense. We're talking about frequency, duration, and intensity. Sometimes your prayer life is lackluster, my friends, because you are just going through the motions. You're just doing it to check it off your list, check a box. My friends, when you get on your knees, or if you can't get on your knees, when it's time to pray, you pray in the Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to permeate your life with discipline. You lean into that, and you pray fervently, my friends. That is discipline. Okay? Those are fervent prayers when you pray with all your heart. And it doesn't have to be long. So, we have measurable goals if we're disciplined, okay? We don't have just goals. I wanna lose weight, period. No, don't tell me you wanna lose weight. Don't tell me you wanna be in your Bible more. That's not enough. I wanna hear you say, I'm gonna be in my Bible six days a week. I'm gonna be in my Bible seven days a week. I'm gonna be in my Bible for 20 minutes at a time, and then I'm gonna take notes. And then I'm gonna be in prayer seven days a week. Intentional prayer in which I set my alarm or there's a certain point of the day in my life in which maybe <clears throat> I just know at 3 p.m., I think it was Daniel who prayed at 3 p.m., I'm just gonna pray fervent prayers. And maybe it'll be five minutes and maybe it'll be 20 minutes, but it doesn't make a difference. It's the intensity of my prayer. All right, let's take a look at 2 Timothy 3.16. So if you're in Ephesians, you wanna flip over to the right to 2 Timothy, past Thessalonians. Here we are. 2 Timothy 3.16. You guys there yet? I'm not. I'm working on it. Again, this is not my Bible. Am I in the right place? Yeah, 2 Timothy 3.16. There we are. There's 14, 15. Here we are. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Now, that's a wonderful scripture, and I know you've heard it preached before, my friends, but I want to tell you that it is about discipline. All scripture is God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in what? Righteousness the righteousness of God. It means that we need to be in the word of God because we judge our life according to the word of God. This is our biblical worldview. This is the standard that we live by. It's not by popular opinion that I get to look at myself and how well I'm doing compared to my neighbors or how well I'm doing compared to my relatives or how well I'm doing compared to my friends. No, how well am I doing according to God's word? Because that's where the truth is. Now let's take a look at Hebrews 12, five, okay? Hebrews 12, five, so flip over to the right. If you still have your Bible, open a little bit. Hebrews 12, five, and verse, yeah. Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse five. 
I'm getting there. It's a little bit different when I'm not sitting at a table. But if you don't have your Bible open, that's okay. I'll read it for you. But Hebrews 12, 5, I love this verse. <clears throat> and I want to read more than that. So I'm going to keep reading. So stick with me here, my friends. Hebrews 12, 5. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the ones he loves, and he chastens or chastens everyone he accepts and calls sons. Verse 7, stick with me. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. I love that. I love that. Isn't that powerful? Now, Hebrews 12, 11 makes it clear by the context that some form of pain is involved in the disciplinary process. My friends, if you want to lose 10 pounds, there will be discomfort. There will be pain. You will deny yourself something that your body wants or your mind or your heart desires, my friends. If you want to be a bodybuilder, you will go through great pain. When I see people with great big bulging muscles, you know, weight lifters and whatnot. My father was a weight lifter. And I remember him being downstairs in the basement lifting weights and I could hear the clanking of those weights coming up and down as he was using the pulleys and whatnot. I knew that he was building his body. We have to take our bodies and make them our slave. Yes, we do, my friends. If you want to get bigger, biceps, triceps, shoulders, pecs, everything else, you have to make it your slave. But my friends, listen to me, spiritually minded. You have to get your body to conform, your mind to conform. The Bible says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but by the renewing of your mind. That means that you have to stay in the word of God. If you truly want to be disciplined, you go to church on Sunday, okay? Now, if you can't because of the pandemic, that's different, but you have to go to church, you have to go to church on Wednesday. You force yourself to join me on prayer meetings Tuesday night at 6 p.m. You have to be disciplined to stay in God's word and to do those things that do not come natural to you. Discipline does not come natural to you. You see, uh, eating chocolate cake is natural. Eating Doritos for breakfast is natural, okay? Okay. Can I just be honest with you? My breakfast this morning was Doritos. That was my one carb for the day. I've already used it. That means my lunch cannot be a, carbo a carbohydrate. My dinner cannot be. I'm on salad and vegetables for the rest of the day. Okay? Why? Because I choose to live a disciplined life. And that means I want to stay 175 pounds. It means that I have to go to the weight room every once in a while and mess around with the weights. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing the best I can. See, don't judge me about Doritos, guys. Come on now. Come on. I'm staying 175 pounds because I'm doing what I need to do. But when you're enjoying your pasta tonight, just remember, I already had my pasta. My pasta just came in the form of Doritos. So <clears throat> uh, I get one carb a day. I will stay disciplined in my reading and my prayer and my thought life. But my friends, if you're wanting to lose weight, that's great. If you're wanting to become stronger, a bodybuilder, whatever the case is, 
that's great. But I want to remind you that the greatest thing you can do for your body, your mind, and your heart for the Lord is to force your, your mind and your heart to love Jesus. That means that you are forcing yourself to get up in the middle of the night when you are spurned on to pray. It means that you are opening the word of God even though you're busy and you've got a lot of tasks yet that still need to be done. It means that you are forcing yourself to do the things that are not natural for you to do. Nobody runs the race and wins the prize by accident. It comes by discipline. Yes, I love my Twizzlers. I ate them all. They're all gone. But I never got over 175 pounds. Why? Because when I ate my Twizzlers, I had to eat salad the rest of the day or fresh vegetables that I, I made on the grill or I boiled or whatever. Sometimes they're just raw. But my friends, I don't mind eating junk food, but I can't eat junk food all day. My point is, guys, do I want to be 200 pounds? I'd love to be. I'd love to have Doritos every day. The truth of the matter is, I feel good at 175 pounds. And I feel good getting into the Word of God for 20 or 30 minutes a day with you at 11 a.m. I feel good praying with Dina and reading a scripture with her, usually a chapter, before we go to bed. I pray, she prays before we turn on our Netflix. My friends, live a disciplined life before God. There is no greater calling than for you to live a disciplined life. Everything in moderation, including Twizzlers. You know that is my thing. And every two weeks, I get a Mountain Dew. I see, I think it was Michael that wrote something about Mountain Dew there. Do I get a Mountain Dew every day? Absolutely not. I don't get a Mountain Dew every day. I used to. Did you know I could drink Mountain Dew and not gain weight? I can't do it anymore, nor, and nor do I think it's good for me. And it's probably not good for you either, Michael, but you're young. But my point is this. I don't get to eat and do everything that I want to do. I make my body my slave. I make my mind my slave, and I am led by the Spirit of the living God, my friends. Be encouraged. You can do it. Don't give up. Okay, I want to close by praying with you. I want to say I love you guys. I know this is a hard teaching, and uh, I hope that I use myself as kind of a, an example. Um, it's okay. You make mistakes. You eat that chocolate cake. You wish you hadn't when you're finished, but boy, it tasted good, didn't it? So that just means that you have to be disciplined the rest of the day. So give yourself grace, but at the same time, my friends, I love your comments, by the way, they're a crack up. I love your comments, but be disciplined as it pertains to spirituality, in your prayer life, in reading, in abstaining from things that you know are harmful for you, and set goals, measurable goals. What are they? Don't tell me you wanna read the Bible more. Tell me how you're gonna do it. Well, I used to read the Bible three days a week and now I wanna read it six. I think that's a great measurable goal and make it with frequency, duration, and intensity. All right, my friends, live a disciplined life and God will richly reward you for it. I love you guys. I want us to be at church on Sunday. Listen, I think a measurable goal will be something like, you know what? Um, I get up for work every day, Monday through Friday. The last thing I would want to compromise is church. Uh, barring the pandemic, if you need to stay home to be safe, that's different. But if I'm going to make church my objective, my priority, then I'm going to church on Sunday. Just as I force my body to get up so that I wouldn't be late for work on Monday, I'm gonna force myself to go to church on Sunday or Wednesday or Tuesday or to pray and read my Bible and be the man and woman that God created me to be. Hallelujah. I love you guys. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for this simple devotion today. The reminder to us, Lord, that we are to be disciplined, 
that we are to be mindful, not just of our bodies, Lord, but our heart and our spirit as well. Let us make it our slave that we would serve you, Jesus, faithfully. For no one says on their deathbed, I wish I had spent more time at the office. I wish I had had more chocolate cake. I wish I had gained another 50 pounds, but that I wish I had been disciplined. I wish I had forced myself to read more. I wish I had prayed more fervently. I wish I had been more involved in my local church and led more people to Jesus. God, give us discipline to be the salt and light that you have called us and created us to be. And I pray for anyone who's struggling with this particular issue of discipline. All of us have from time to time, but I pray that you would encourage them to not give up. We thank you, Father, for the simple devotion today. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Get safe. Get back here safe. Um, oh, it looks like you're already back, John Henry. That's good. And, um, oh, you're still in Cadillac, Michigan. Okay. Yeah, Sue, my friend, uh, John Henry Ellis is in Cadillac, Michigan. Uh, my friend Sue and Alan, they are Michiganders. We got a few of us here at the church. Most of the people from our church seems to be from Ohio, but we won't hold that against them. We still love them. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful day. I love you. Thank you for calling me to be your pastor. Be blessed. Today's Friday. I won't be with you tomorrow, but don't forget, tomorrow night, Saturday Night Live with Pastor Jonathan Kessie on Facebook Live, the Park Place Church Facebook page. He's a wonderful teacher. I think he's the best we have. I'm going to have a great time tonight, and I'm going to have a great... <laughs> Go Bucks. I'm going to say Buccaneers, okay? Go Buccaneers, because Tom Brady's the quarterback. You like that, don't you, Sherry? See what I did there? Okay, you better you better say Go Ohio State, because otherwise I'm just going to interpret, that, interpret this as the Buccaneers. Anyway, I'm going to have fun at the beach, because I think that's what I'm doing with Sweet Dina tomorrow. I love you guys. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day. I will see you Sunday morning.